Dzień dobry, cześć and hello. Today, guys, I'm going to be telling you about seven of the Polish people who actually changed America. These are Polish people who either had an influence or actually changed America itself. So before we get started, I wanted to say thanks for a viewer on this channel. Grzegorz Kotso, I just butchered your name completely. Ale dziękuję bardzo. I really appreciate it and it means a whole lot to me. I was really having trouble finding this list myself and when I reached out to you, you had so much information to help me out with. So I just want to say thanks. So with that said, let's just get started. All right, so the first one on this list, and it's sadly a name that I'm going to butcher like most of the names on this list, but his name is Andrzej Tadeusz Bonivetora Kosciuszko. I think that's how you say it. Okay, so he was born in 1746 in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Now, what is the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, you're asking? The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was a dual state, a bi-confederation of Poland and Lithuania ruled by a common monarch. So it was basically a combination of Poland and Lithuania ruled by a common king. Now this guy was a military engineer, a statesman, and a military leader who became a national hero in Poland, Lithuania, Belarus, and the United States. Now he fought against Russia for the Commonwealth and on the US side of the American Revolutionary War. Okay, this guy had a pretty interesting life for this time period. And he was also a supreme commander of the Polish National Armed Forces. So at age 20, he graduated from Corps of Cadets in Warsaw. Saw Poland. Basically, during a wartime, he moved to France in 1769 to study, and then he returned later to the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. So, in 1776, Andrew moved to North America where he took place in the American Revolutionary War. He actually designed and oversaw the construction of West Point, New York, which, as most people know, is a very prestigious military school in the U.S. And in 1783, he was actually recognized for his services and he was actually promoted to a brigadier general. And he actually returned to Poland in 1784, where he returned into the military and fought against the Russian War of 1792. And then shortly after that, he actually organized an uprising in 1794 against Russia. And then in 1796, he actually emigrated back to the United States, where he was actually close friends with Thomas Jefferson. And then in 1798, he wrote a will dedicating his U.S. assets to the education and the freedom of U.S. slaves. And then he eventually returned to Europe and lived in Switzerland until his death in 1817. So it's pretty cool. Like you can see that he definitely had an influence on the United States. Now, whether that was building military buildings like West Point or just talking and being friends with Thomas Jefferson, you can see that he definitely influenced the United States in some way. All right, so the second person on this list, and it's another name that I'm definitely gonna butcher, but that is Kashmir, Kashmiraj Michał Wadzław. Viktor Pulowski, and that's basically English for Kazimir Pulowski. So he was born in 1745 in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, in Warsaw actually, more specifically. And he was a soldier and a military commander who was actually known as the father of American cavalry. Growing up, he actually fought against Russia to protect the Commonwealth, and sadly, when the uprising failed, he was dragged into exile. And following a recommendation by Benjamin Franklin, Pulowski traveled to North America to help the cause of the American Revolutionary War. He distinguished himself throughout the revolution, most notably when he saved the life of George Washington. Pulowski became a general of the Continental Army created by the Pulowski Cavalry Legion and formed the American Cavalry as a whole. At the Battle of Savannah, while leading a cavalry charge against British forces, he was fatally wounded by a grape shot and died shortly after. So this is a Polish person who came over to the United States in exile from war and actually got back into war and served in the American Revolutionary War and then saved George Washington. I mean, you can just see from that how much of an influence he had on America as a whole. And who knows what would have happened if he didn't save George Washington. It's just something to think about and it's pretty interesting to see how someone born in Poland could have honestly saved and changed America in some way. So the third one on this list is Maximilian Faktorowicz. Faktorowicz. I think that's how you say it, but he was also known as Max Factor. So he was born in Poland in 1877, and he was a Polish businessman, a beautician, an entrepreneur, and inventor. And he founded the company Max Factor and Company. And he actually largely developed the modern cosmetics industry in the United States and popularized the term makeup. So in 1904, he actually decided to follow his brother Nathan and his uncle to America. And he only had $400 in his possessions. And there he basically started to make makeup and sell creams and lotions and all of that stuff. And this is crazy to think about, but his net worth in 2019, the equivalent of, would be $3.1 billion. That is insane. 
So you can just see from this, he definitely influenced America and probably most of the world when it comes to makeup and you know the evolution of makeup you know over time so this one actually blew my mind because he's this guy from poland that decided to go to america with only 400 dollars and start a makeup company and basically change the industry entirely all right so the fourth person on this list is ralph modieski he was born in poland in 1861 and he was a civil engineer that basically designed a ton of different projects in the united states so from what i can tell he was studying in paris and he obtained a american citizenship at the time and he actually moved to chicago in 1893 and had his own office and all that basically just designing these different projects so there's a whole list of bridges and different projects that he's helped build but the biggest one to me that stuck out was the Manhattan Bridge and the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. It's just crazy to see these guys just come over to America, start making these inventions, and then, you know, living a really great life here in America. And it's just inspiring. And it, honestly, it makes me feel prideful to be in America right now. And, you know, just to know that all these different countries, including Poland, um, you know, have created these amazing people who have come over to America to really make it what it is today. All right, so the next Polish person on this list is a girl known as Pola Negri. Now, she was born in 1897, and she was a Polish stage and film actress and singer who achieved worldwide fame during the silent and golden eras of Hollywood and European film at the time. So after her father was sent to Siberia, she was raised by her single mother in poverty. So she went on to study ballet and acting in Warsaw, and she became a well-known actress in 1917. And from there, she relocated to Germany and started making silent films there in Berlin. And from there, her film performances came to the attention of Hollywood executives at Paramount Pictures. And from there, they offered her a film contract. And she signed with Paramount in 1922, making her the first European actress in history to be contracted in Hollywood. And from there, she spent much of her time in the 1920s working in the United States, appearing in numerous films for Paramount. And this is just another interesting story about, you know, all of these different circumstances in life. And she's still brought to this, you know, great opportunity to live in the United States, you know, after struggling from a difficult time. And it's pretty cool to see, and honestly inspiring, like I said, with most of these people. And she definitely influenced the United States when it came to filming because she definitely changed the industry in some way. I mean, a lot of people were inspired by her and became actors and actresses just because of her. It's just kind of interesting how, you know, the butterfly effect kind of works in some different ways. You know, sometimes someone will, you know, inspire or influence other people and then they will start creating stuff themselves. And that's honestly how my YouTube channel started. All right. So the sixth one on this list is a guy that's known as Jan Szechepanik. Jan Szechepanik. Okay, I think that's how you say it. So he was born in 1872 in Poland and he's basically an inventor. So he has several hundred patents with over 50 discoveries to his name, many of which still apply today, especially in the motion picture industry as well as photography and television. Some of the concepts help the future of evolution of the TV broadcasting industry such as Tetrascope and the wireless telegraph, which greatly affected the development of telecommunications. So this one's a really cool one. This guy is an inventor with a really cool mustache. Man, I have to grow something like that too one day. Um, and this guy invented so many different things and inspired many different further uh, inventions and stuff like that. For example, with television, the film industry, and even telecommunications with cell phones and all that technology. So it's pretty cool to think like this guy that was born in Poland inspired and influenced and created all this technology to be further developed into what it is today. All right, so the final one on this list today is a guy known as Erasm. Yaromovsky. I think that's how you say it. I'm just going to leave it with that because this one's giving me some trouble. But anyways, he was born in June 1844. He was an industrialist philanthropist and he was a patron of art and he was actually a soldier in the January uprising of 1863 to 1865. So he graduated from school in Warsaw, shortly after went to war in the uprising and he went to Paris to actually study. So after the wars, he began working as an engineer in 1873, and he started working for a French company that had been exploiting uh, lighting gas in America. And they actually sent him to the United States. And he was working on the production of calcium carbide, and he was also patenting 17 inventions in the field of mining and investing money. 
So in 1882, he was a co-founder of Equitable Gaslight Company in New York, and as a vice chairman, he led the company for 13 years. And he was a founder of gas companies in Chicago, Baltimore, and owned gas factories in Indianapolis. And he actually became one of the richest Americans at the time. So here's another guy who came over from Poland and started making these different inventions and patents and all of that and helped develop industries as well as a whole and this one the gas industry and yeah I mean this is just crazy to think like these people just came over from Poland and they were able to make these inventions became one of the richest men in America and inspired many to also follow in his footsteps it's just it's pretty cool to think about all right guys so those were the seven Polish people that changed or influenced America in some way so I'm sure I missed so many but this is just what I have today in my list and if you have any more for me leave them in the comment section down below and as always I want to thank you for watching Jin Kuei Dobitanya